Hello, my name is Justin Poole. I'm the artist in residence at Asbury United Methodist Church. And I'm also a certified yoga instructor. And I was asked to give a class tonight um, for those of you at home who might be interested in doing some yoga. Um, I'm going to ask you, if you will, to find a place on the floor. Um, a hardwood floor is probably preferable, although carpet works too. Um, any surface you have is fine. Uh, if you have a yoga mat, go ahead and set out your yoga mat. If you don't, that's great too. Um, I might be referring to a yoga mat throughout this practice, but it's fine if you don't have one. So I'm going to ask you if you'll just lay down on your mat or on the ground. And as you lay down, just relax your muscles into the ground. Maybe focus on breathing, on maybe inhaling through your nose and maybe exhaling through your mouth. With your eyes closed. Loosening your stomach muscles, relaxing. Maybe pretend you're lying on a warm, sandy beach, and each time you exhale, you bring another muscle group down deeper into the ground. You're just joining me, hello. Hi. I'm recording this session for um, the purposes of putting it up on the website, and, and that way if we have a few people joining us, then other people get to do it later. Good to see you. Um, and if you could uh, go ahead and mute your um, screen if you're watching this live, that way, um, great, perfect, great. And um, I'm just asking everyone to go ahead and uh, find a place somewhere on the floor, either on a yoga mat or just somewhere on, on a floor anywhere, and lie down on your backs and just do some concentrated, focused breathing. So maybe breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And I like to begin with some kind of a centering activity or something to focus our practice on and I'd like to focus our practice today on the idea of contemplative prayer. I wanna read from, this is a book called Everything Belongs from Richard Rohr. He's a Franciscan friar who I greatly admire. Um, this uh, book is, uh, the subtitle is The Gift of Contemplative Prayer. And I think that in the midst of all the chaos in the world that we're living through right now, uh, it's good to try to cultivate a life of contemplative prayer. So I'm going to read just a little bit from him here. Prayer is not primarily saying words or thinking thoughts. It is rather a stance. It's a way of living in the presence, living in awareness of the presence, and even of enjoying the presence. The full contemplative is not just aware of the presence, but trusts, allows, and delights in it. All spiritual disciplines have one purpose, to get rid of illusions so we can be present. And Richard Rohr goes on in another chapter of this book, and he talks about a prayer that he uses to draw himself and others into the contemplative frame of mind, where you are actively listening as opposed to just rattling off words or ideas in your head. And this is how the prayer goes. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. So if you want to pray this prayer with me, I'll repeat it twice more, and then you can repeat it on your own, in your heads, as you're doing this practice, as you're lying on the floor and breathing. Feel free. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. 
Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. And as you breathe and you relax your muscle grips into the ground with each exhalation of breath, feel free to repeat this mantra or this prayer in your head, bringing awareness to this present moment. From here, gradually roll over to your side. And gradually come up into a tabletop position. I'm going to be sideways here so that you can see. And eventually I'll reorient myself and I'll start mirroring you as you go through your practice today. So tabletop position, you have your knees about two fists apart from each other and you're plugging your hands into the ground and the tops of your feet are also plugged into the ground here and you're going to take yourself through a few cat and cow poses so a cat pose is where you lift up your back like your halloween cat arching your back pushing the ground away with your hands Gaze goes down and back. And cow, you arch your back like it's a hammock. You bring your gaze up towards the ceiling. Again, you're pushing the ground away. And take yourself through a few cats and cows. So go back down into cat. Maybe exhaling. On the cat, come back in the cow. Maybe inhaling in the cow. Marry the movement to the breath. It's very important in yoga. For the breath and the movement pose to work together. And the purpose of this practice is to cultivate that presence. So if you want to continue to go back to that prayer, as you're in the midst of it, feel free. Flow through a few more times in the cat and cow. Now we're going to kind of scrape the barrel a little bit. So you pretend that you're on the inside of this barrel and you're going to scrape the inside of the barrel with your torso. So you're going to kind of move your hips a little bit to the right. You're going to come up into a cat and you're going to scrape the top of the barrel with your spine. Then you're going to move a little bit to the left. You're going to scrape the left side of the barrel with the left side of your torso. Then scrape the bottom of the barrel with your belly. And so you're on the inside of this barrel and you're scraping all the interior sides of this barrel here. As you're kind of moving around a little bit, getting your hips working, getting your spine working. Breathing. And go in the opposite direction, left side. A wing kitty, right side, belly. Maybe one or two more times, scraping that barrel, and then come back into your tabletop pose. Now you're going to reach your right fingertips forward and reach your left leg back. So push into an imaginary wall with your back leg, your left leg, your left foot. And then pretend there's someone pushing down on your uh, heel with an imaginary hand and you're gonna push up into their hand and push back into that wall. And then you're gonna send your fingertips, your right fingertips forward. So it's like you have energy in your core and you're sending that energy out through your fingertips and then sending that energy out through the back of 
your foot. Good to visualize that sometime. Then you're going to come and you're going to bring your right elbow to your left knee. And then back out, send that energy out through your fingertips, out through your, the back of your left foot. And then right elbow to left knee, back out again. One more time together. And back out. And come back into tabletop. Probably feel a little bit of a burn there. This is mostly a pretty gentle yoga class, um, probably suitable for beginners. So if there's anything that we do that feels a little bit too intense, feel free to back off or maybe just come to a resting pose. Tabletop is a really good resting pose if you feel like it. And we're going to do the opposite night side now. You're going to stretch that right foot back. Again, pushing up into an imaginary hand with your heel and pushing back into an imaginary wall with the bottom of your right foot. And then you're gonna send your left fingertips shooting forward, send that energy out from your core, out through your fingertips and out through the back right foot. And then bring your elbow in to your right knee. Stretch back out again. Again, left elbow, right knee. Stretch back out. One more time together. And back out. And come back into tabletop. From here, take yourself through a few more cat and cows. And then come back into child's pose by bringing your butt down and bringing your fingertips forward. So you're creating space here and you're lengthening through your spine. Bring your forehead down towards the ground. And then you're gonna bring your fingertips to the right side. Use this the urge to bring your left hip up, bring it down towards the ground. And you're gonna feel a stretch through the left side of your torso here. Don't forget to breathe as always. Breathe deeply. Bring your fingertips to the left side. Make sure that your right hip is down and stretch out through the right side of your torso. Fingertips forward, traditional child's pose. Walk your fingertips forward a little bit more and then sit your butt back down a little bit more for a deeper stretch. And then gradually you're gonna move forward and you're gonna come down onto your belly. So from here on your belly, you're gonna go ahead and you're going to plug the tops of your feet into the ground and your legs, upper legs are pointing, are down into the ground. And you're going to bring your hands so that they're maybe a few inches above your chest, maybe right at your chest. And you're going to gradually arch your back and come into a little baby cobra. Not relying too much on your upper arm strength, just arching your back a little bit, focusing on those back muscles. and come back down. You can rest on one cheek or the other cheek. And from here, you're gonna go back up into a higher cobra. So you can push the ground away a little bit more with your upper arm strength. Peel your chest up off the ground. Pelvis is in the grounds, tops of your feet, your legs planted. Gaze goes up. Bring your shoulders down, so your shoulders don't go all the way up to your ears. Bring them down. And 
then come back down, rest on one cheek or the other. What we're doing is laying a foundation for a flow that we're gonna do later, gentle yoga flow. From here, bring your chin into the ground and we're going to come into an up dog. So with up dog, what you do is you bring your hands maybe a little bit further towards, um, uh, towards your feet and you push the ground away, bring your pelvis up off the ground a little bit to get a deeper stretch, send your gaze up, bend your back. And gradually make your way back down and rest. Now I'm going to face you and I'm going to mirror you. And we're going to come into a downward facing dog. So downward facing dog is you're putting your hands down on the mat, the very top of the mat. You're pushing the ground away with your hands and you're gradually lifting your butt up. And uh, think about maybe bending your knees and bringing your butt up and back so you create length in your spine here. And once you've done that, once you've created some length in your spine, you can think about unbending your knees, straightening your legs and bringing your heels down into the mat, down the ground, downward facing dog. Cool. Now, if you find your back is starting to round a little bit too much when you bring your heels down, it's not really worth it to do that. So you can bring your heels up, you can keep that bend in your knees. From here, you're going to go gradually forward. So you're at a high plank pose. And then you're gonna come all the way down and then up dog or cobra and then back to a downward facing dog. Now you're going to step your right foot forward and then your left foot to meet it. And you're gonna to come to halfway lifting. So your back is now parallel with the ground and forward fold. Now come all the way up. Clasp your hands together. And maybe bend your back a little bit, looking up towards the sky. From here, bring your hands back down. Bring your right foot back, your left foot back. High plank, lower down slowly. Up dog or cobra, downward facing dog. From here, you're going to, again, you're going to bring your right foot forward, your left foot to meet it. Halfway lift, forward fold, come all the way up. And now you're going to stand in a mountain pose. So you're going to bring your feet so they're about two fists apart. That's a pretty good stance. And bring your shoulders back and plug them down and open up your palms to the front. Now you're gonna create length in your spine by pretending there's an imaginary puppeteer in the sky and you're like a marionette. And that puppeteer is gonna lift a string at the top of your skull and you're gonna feel yourself grow a little bit even as you're pushing the ground away with your feet. This is mountain pose or Chadasana. This is a really good rest pose, but it's still active, an active rest pose. If you ever get stuck anywhere and you just want to kind of hang out, this is another one like tabletop you can come to. We're going to go a little faster now through a flow. So bring your arms all the way up. Swan dive down, bringing your chest forward. Step your right foot back, your left foot back, high plank, lower down. Up dog or cobra. Downward facing dog. You can bring your feet, you can bend your knees and then bring both of your feet together in the front if you want, if you want to jump to the front. Halfway lift, forward fold, all the way up. And if the jump is not working for you, then you can just do right foot first, left foot next. Come all the way down. 
high plank, lower down, up dog or cobra, downward facing dog, one more time, step or jump forward, halfway lift, forward fold, all the way up, come back down, step or jump back, high plank, lower down, up dog or cobra, meet and downward dog. From here, you can kind of bicycle it back and forth by maybe bending your right knee, feeling a stretch through your left torso. Bend your left knee, feel a stretch through the right side of your body. And just go back and forth a few times if it's comfortable. If it's not, you can always hang out in child pose for just a breath or two. From here, you're going to either step or jump forward, and you're going to bring your feet and your legs together, and you're going to sit back into an imaginary chair as you bring your fingertips up towards the sky. So it's very important to make sure that your knees are not going past your toes. You won't hold this that much longer, I promise. Chair pose, all the way up, Come back down, high plank, lower down, up dog or cobra, downward facing dog. One more time into chair, step or jump forward, feet together, sit back into your imaginary chair or throne. It makes you feel more powerful to call it that throne. All the way back up, and then come down, high plank, lower down. Up dog or cobra, downward facing dog. Bring your left leg up and back, lifting up high and downward dog. Three legged dog. And bring your left foot forward in between your hands and bring the top of your right foot into the ground and your right shin is in the ground. And you're gonna come up onto a low lunge. So you're feeling a great stretch through the upper right leg. And you're feeling a back bend here when you clasp your hands and you bend back and you bring your gaze up. Bring your hands back down. And then you're going to bring the ball of your right foot into the ground. You're gonna come on up into a high lunge over here, more challenging pose. Again, you can do a back bend. The wider your stance, the more challenging it is. Any arm variation you would like here. And gradually make your way back down, bring your left foot back, high plank, lower down, up dog or cobra. Downward dog. Bring your opposite foot forward, uh, back, in the three-legged dog, rather. So your right foot goes up. Bring your right foot forward in between your hands. Bring your left shin, top of your left foot, into the ground. Low lunge on this side, opposite side. Back bend here. You can bring your hands to the ground a little bit, and then you can bring yourself up into a high lunge on this side. So you can create more width this way to the right and left if you want more stability. And if you want to back off, if it feels too much, you can bring your feet a little closer together this way. Or if you want it more challenging, you can bring your back foot back a little bit more. And again, back bend here. Make sure that your front knee is not going past your front toes. And bring your hands down, that's it. High plank, lower down, up dog or cobra, downward facing dog. Bring your left foot up, three-legged dog. 
bend your left knee and open up your hips to the left side of the room. And then bring your left toes to meet your left wrist and bring your back foot, your right foot at a 45 degree angle with the back of the mat like that. Hips are gradually making their way towards the front, not totally squared with the front of the room, kind of off at a little bit of an angle between the 45 degree angle and the front. And bring your arms up. This is warrior one. You want to get a little bit more of a stretch here, a little bit more of a back bend. You can clasp your hands behind you. You can bring your shoulders back and down, look up. If you want even more of an interesting thing here, you can do humble warrior. Bring your chest down towards the ground and your fingers go up towards the sky. Or you can just hang out in warrior one, that's cool too. Any arm variation you would like. From here, you're gonna bring your back foot so that it is the outer side of your back foot is parallel with the back of the mat. You're gonna open up your hips to the right side of the room. You're gonna pull off an imaginary sweater and then bring your fingertips so that they're crossed. So your fingertips are pointing towards the front and towards the back. So you're like in a T is what I mean. You're like in a T here. And then you're going to deepen that warrior two, if you will, if you wish. Bring your front palm up towards the sky, hinge forward just a little bit, and then bring your warrior back into reverse warrior. Look up towards the sky. And then come into an extended side angle by bringing the front, uh, <laughs> by bringing your left arm so that it comes down to the top of your left leg, and then bring your right arm up on a diagonal with your, with your right foot. So there's a diagonal line being created between the outside of your right foot going all the way up your body and out through your right fingertips. Extended side angle pose. Come back into warrior two. And just like that, it's over. So you're gonna come down and you're gonna bring your right knee down into the ground. The top of your right foot goes into the ground. And then you're gonna bring your left foot over a few inches to the left side of your mat. And you're going to plug your hands into the ground. This is a um, lizard pose here. And you're gonna feel a great stretch inside here. And if you want an even deeper stretch here, you're welcome to bring your forearms down into the ground. Then gradually come out of that pose. You're gonna bring the ball of your right foot into the ground. You're gonna lift up your leg and just kind of circle your left leg a little bit behind you. Now bring your left knee to your left wrist. And we're gonna come into a pigeon pose here. So your left knee goes to your left wrist and your back foot is going straight back and you're gradually moving your pelvis down towards the ground a little bit here feeling a stretch through the outer side of your upper right, uh, left leg. Now you can hang out up here, or if you want a deeper stretch, you can move your forearms down into the ground. Pigeon pose. If this hurts your knee, back off. You're not doing it right. And it's really hard to gauge how you're doing this um, from over Zoom, one of the downfalls of this kind of technology. Um, gradually make your way up again. Push the ground away with your hands. 
and lift up your right, or your left leg rather, and circle it around a few times and bring it back down into downward facing dog. Flow through once by plank, lower down, up dog cobra, downward facing dog, step or jump forward, halfway lift, forward fold, all the way up, and come back down, step or jump back, high plank, lower down, up dog or cobra, downward dog, lift your right leg up and back, three-legged dog, Open up your hips to the right side of the room as you bend your right knee. Send your right foot to your left wrist, or to your right wrist rather. Right foot, right wrist. Come on up into warrior one on the opposite side. Again, if you want a more intense workout here, you can move your foot forward a little bit, widen that stance. If you want something more of a back bend, you can clasp your hands behind you, look up, and then you can always come down and humble that warrior. Any arm variation you would like to do here. Hold it for one more breath. And then bring your back foot so that the back, the outside of your back foot is parallel with the back of your mat. Pull off an imaginary sweater. Right fingertips go forward, left fingertips go back. Lengthen through your spine. Breathe in warrior two. Front palm up, hinge forward a little bit. Reverse your warrior and come into extended side angle. Diagonal line from the outside of your outer left foot up through your left fingertips. Come back into warrior two. Cartwheel your arms back down and then bring your left top of your left foot into the ground, bring your right foot so that it's a few inches to the outside of your mat. And you can again, bring your forearms down into the ground for a lizard pose on this side right here. Feeling a stretch through the inner parts of your upper legs, especially. And then Bring your hands back into the ground, push the ground away with your hands and bring your right foot up. Circle your right leg around a few times and then bring your right leg back down, downward facing dog. Hang out here for a breath or two. One last flow, come forward, lower down, up dog or cobra. Downward facing dog. Step or jump forward. Halfway lift. Forward fold. All the way up. And when you're all the way up here, clasp your hands together and bring the weight of your body a little bit more into your right foot. And then bring your fingertips so they're pointing to the right side of the room. And your hip goes in the opposite direction. Now come back up, bend your back, gaze up towards the sky a little bit more. Come back up, go in the opposite direction, to the left side of the room. Come back up and come all the way down, step or jump back. High plank, lower down, up dog or cobra. And we forgot the pigeon on this side, so we're gonna come back. I forgot the pigeon on this side. Come back into downward facing dog. You're gonna lift your right leg up in the air. You're gonna bend your knee. 
And you're gonna bring your right knee to your right wrist. Come on down into a pigeon on this side. So your left leg, left foot, left toes are pointing behind you. Right knee to right wrist. You can come down into your forearms. You can come all the way down, bringing your forehead down into the ground for a deeper stretch. Gradually bring your hands back into the mat, push the ground away. Bring your right foot and leg up. Circle it around a few times, downward facing dog. And now you're gonna come on onto your backs. So I'm gonna reorient myself here so it's easier to explain. So I'm gonna gradually just move back onto my back here. I'm gonna keep my knees up towards the sky and put my feet into the ground. Gradually take your shins in your hands and bring your knees to your chest and then bring your knees over to the left side of your body and then bring your fingertips and your arms and your gaze over to the right side of your body. Spinal twist. And the opposite direction, bring your knees over to the right side, bring your gaze and your fingertips over to the left side. From here, bring your feet back down into the ground. And we're just gonna do one bridge pose or two bridge poses, it depends on how you feel. So you're gonna push the ground away with your feet. You're gonna bring your pelvis up towards the sky you're going to gradually work your arms, your shoulders back behind you and clasp your hands underneath your sacrum. Bridge pose. If that feels good, awesome. Come out of it right now for just a moment. Do a counter pose by bringing your knees to your chest. You can even circle your legs around a little bit to the right or to the left. If you wanna stay down here, just kind of hanging out and kind of rolling around, that's awesome. If you wanna stay just kind of laying on the ground with your feet into the ground and your knees up, that's good too. If you wanna do another spinal twist, feel free to do it. Or if you wanna do another bridge, feel free to do that. Or if it's in your practice, if you're comfortable with it, you can do something a little bit more crazy. Um, put your hands down into the ground on either side of your ears, fingertips pointing towards your toes, and you can come on up into a wheel pose, bringing your feet a little bit closer to your head here, and then lifting up and lifting your head off the ground. And then gradually, whether you were in bridge or in wheel, gradually come out of that pose and do a counter pose of sorts by bringing your knees back towards your chest, maybe rolling around a little bit, maybe do a happy baby pose where you bring your feet towards the ceiling and clasp the outer sides of your right and your left foot with your hands and pull down towards the ground. Wherever you are, whatever is comfortable for you, take the next minute or two to do something on the ground to make yourself comfortable. Maybe there's another muscle group that you wanna stretch. Maybe you wanna do another spinal twist. And then gradually after you've completed your practice, come into Shavasana or corpse pose, which is how we began tonight. 
laying on the ground, muscles relaxing into the ground beneath you. Close your eyes and breathe. And if you wish, pray this prayer. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. Be still. Be. Gradually make your way over to your side and make your way to a comfortable seated position. Bring your hands to heart center and prayer position. And I want to thank you all for joining me. Thus concludes our practice today. Thank you. Here's my helper here, Yana. <laughs>